All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are talking about centripetal force and more specifically in the horizontal motion, which I believe is easier than vertical motion, which is next time. All right, let's get to it. A ball is attached to a string, conceptual example number 10, a ball is attached to a string is moved at a constant speed in a horizontal circular path. A target is located near the path of the ball as shown in the diagram. At which point along the path should the target should the string be released if the ball is to hit the target? Okay, so we see the ball here. We also see that this ball is going clockwise. So where should it be released? Um, so some people might say C, because if the string is released here, it'll go and hit this target. However, that won't be correct. What would happen is if the ball is over here, and let's say the string is released, what's going to happen is it's going to be moving in a tangential direction. So tangent to this is going to be right here. And that's going to hit the target. So wherever the, where, if the ball was released at A, it'd be a tangent going this way. Ball at C, it'd be a tangent going that way. And D, tangent going that way. Okay, so B is the correct answer here. It would just fly uh, tangentially. It will go towards the tangent velocity. Okay, moving on. A ball is connected to a string uh, rotating a circle on top of a friction stable. What force is allowing the ball to allowing the ball to move in a circle? Okay, so a few things here. Um, so what we know, this ball is going in a circle. However, something is allowing it for it to go in a circle. There's a certain force. A lot of time being able to identify this force, and I should say this force that's allowing it for it to go into a circle is the force centripetal. Okay? So this is crucial in doing these kind of problems is identifying what force is allowing for it to go in a circle. We can kind of go one by one. But what we should be able to see is what's allowing for it to go to the circle is this string over here. Without the string, if the string was cut, if there was no string there, the ball would just fly off. So what force is allowing it to go to uh, in a circle? The force of tension. So we're not doing this problem yet, but we should know that the force of tension is going to be equal to the force centripetal. Okay, moving on. A girl is on a merry-go-round that is revolving in a circle. What force is directly responsible for her circular movement? Okay, so she's spinning in a circle. We're wondering what force, again, is allowing for her to go in a circle. And you could think about this if you want. But what force is directly responsible for this is going to be friction. And that should make sense. Without friction, um, if she starts to slip off, there's no friction, she would just fly off. Or if there was no friction to begin with, she wouldn't be able to spin. So friction is what allows her to move in the circle in this kind of sense. Okay. All right, moving on. A runner moving at a speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second, 8.8 .8 meters per second, rounds a bend with a radius of 25 meters. What is the centripetal acceleration of the runner? When the sprinter runs the bend, what force allows her to make the turn and which uh, which way is the force pointed relative to uh, the circle? Okay. So, let's say we have this person over here. Running in a circular track. <laughs> Sorry, my drawings are not the best. <laughs> so, anyway, let's just do part A. Uh, what is the centripetal acceleration of the runner? So we know acceleration centripetal is equal to V squared over R. So we could just kind of pick uh, to plug this in 8.8 .8 squared divided by R 25 and let's put this into the calculator. 8.8 .8 squared divided by 25 and we get 3.1 meters per second squared. Okay, next question. When the spinster runs the bend, what force allows her to make that turn? And which way is the force pointed relative to the circle? So we should think about, okay, so what allow, what force allows this person to move in a circle? And we should know, or if you think about it, we should know that's going to be the force of friction. And why friction? 
Well, if you could just imagine, let's say you're going around in the circle and there's this patch of ice and you're trying to turn. You're not going to be able to turn. If you don't have friction, you can't turn. So you need friction to make these circular movements or to turn in this instance. And which way is the point uh, uh, pointed towards? Remember, it's a centripetal force, meaning it's going towards the center. Okay, friction. Directly towards the center of the curvature. Okay, moving on. A biker is racing around a perfectly circular track and is accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. If he is moving with a constant speed of 15 meters per second, what is the radius of the track? Okay, so we're looking for this radius here. And we know first a few things. So we know acceleration centripetal is equal to v squared over r. And we can manipulate this formula, or if we memorize the other things, we know that r is equal to v squared over acceleration centripetal. So we could just kind of like plug things in now. So r is equal to v squared, which is 5 squared, um, divided by, oh no, sorry, that's not the velocity. That is the acceleration. v squared, which is 15 squared, divided by acceleration centripetal, which is 5. Now we can plug this in, 15 squared divided by 5 and we get 45 meters okay so this is 45 okay moving on a car that has a mass of 320 kilograms is racing around a perfectly circular track if the radius of the track is 120 meters and the car needs 2240 newtons of frictional force to move in a circle how fast is the car moving okay so a few things going on here. Maybe we could just kind of write it down. So this is 120 meters. Maybe that's all I'll write down. Okay, so how fast is the car moving? So we should know that the force of friction is what allows it to go in a circle. What does that mean? That means that the force of friction is equal to the force centripetal, okay? Since the force of friction allows it to go in a circle, that's what a uh, force centripetal is going to be. We know what force of friction is. That's 2,240. We know what force uh, centripetal is. The formula for that, that's going to be mv squared divided by r. Okay, and we're looking for this v here. Um, okay, so there's a few things we can do. We know uh, force centripetal is equal to mv squared over r. And we can manipulate this to find what V is. So, or you, if you memorize the formula. So we should also know that V is equal to force centripetal times the radius uh, divided by mass. And then this is the square root of that. Okay, so that's on our formula sheet. But let's just kind of plug that in. So the velocity is going to be equal to the square root of force centripetal, which is equal to the force for friction, which is 2240. Uh, the radius, which is equal to 120, divided by the mass, which is 320. So let's kind of put that all in. 2,240 times 120 divided by 320, and then the square root of that. And that's going to be 28.98. Yeah. All right, moving on. Okay, a 0 0.2 kilogram ball is attached to a 1.5 meter string. The ball is swung in a horizontal circle on a frictionless table. The ball makes each revolution in 0 0.8 seconds. Draw a free body diagram of the ball from the side view. Okay, so we have this ball here. Let's kind of draw a free body diagram. We have a force of gravity going down, force of normal, keeping it up or keeping it on the table. Where is this? Frictionless table, yeah. And then the string the string is allowing for it to go in a circle. The force of tension is what's allowing for it to go in a circle. Okay. Uh, so we did that. Uh, I should look at that. Great. Uh, with what speed is the ball traveling? Okay. So how are we going to do this? We should know that the velocity tangential is equal to 2 pi r divided by the period. So now we could just kind of plug this in. 2 pi, the radius is the string, 1.5 meters, okay, so that's the radius, the period, which is 0 0.8 seconds, it makes a revolution 0 0.8 seconds, and this is going to equal, okay, 2 pi r, which is 1.5, divided by 0 0.8, 
and we get around 11.78 meters per second. Great. Then part B, or part C, what is the force allowing the ball to go in a circle? So we kind of talked about this. The force of tension without that string, if that string got cut, if the string wasn't there, it would just the ball would just fly off. So the force of tension is what allows it to go in, in a circle, which is the force centripetal. All right, what is the magnitude of the force in part C? So we should know that force of tension is equal to the force centripetal, which is equal to mv squared divided by r. So let's plug that in. m is 0.2, v we found 11.78 squared divided by the radius, which is 1.5. So let's put that in. 11.78 squared times 0.2 divided by 1.5, and we get 18.5 newtons. Okay, moving on. Okay, an object is moving with a constant speed in uniform circular motion. What can we say about the directions of the acceleration and the velocity? Um, okay, let's say a circle. Uh, let's say the object is right here. They are both going in the same direction. They are going in opposite directions from each other. They are going in perpendicular directions from each other. Impossible to tell. So let's say we have this object moving clockwise. Okay, do not say which way, but let's just say we have this. We should know that the acceleration is always towards the center, centripetal meaning center seeking, and the velocity tangential, the speed, uh, the velocity is always tangential to the circle, meaning it's going to be like this. So what does that mean? They're going to make this kind of angle here, this 90 degree angle, which means it is perpendicular. Okay, moving on. An object moving with constant speed in uniform circular motion. What can we say about the directions of the centripetal force and the velocity? Uh, okay, so similar kind of question here. Let's just look at this again. Remember, cent centripetal force means center seeking. Of course, centripetal. And then t velocity, again, is always tangential. So again, it's going to be the same answer. They're both going in purpose in different directions. Okay, moving on. A ball is connected to a string and is spun in a circle. If a person starts to spin the ball faster and faster, what will happen to the tension in the string? Uh, a, the tension would increase, uh, the tension would decrease, C, the tension would stay the same. Something to know is as this thing is getting faster and faster, the velocity tangent is getting to be more and more, meaning it wants to fly out more and more. So the string is preventing from it to fly out uh, and allowing for it to go in a circle. So that means that force attention will be getting stronger and stronger because it's trying to fly out of the string more and more. And maybe if you spun it too fast, the string would break. But anyway, in short, the force attention increases, which I think is intuitive. Okay, a large truck with a heavy load is making a sharp turn with a quick motion. The truck ends up skidding and crashing. Use your knowledge of centripetal force to explain why. So if we have like, let's say we have this circular path over here and we have this truck. If it turns too quickly or tries to turn too quickly, what's going to happen is it's going to skid. It, there's not enough friction. And because there's not enough script, uh, friction, it could skid and crash. Okay, that's why if you're driving now and when you're going around those bends, you'll see like speed limit gets... uh the speed they advise for is less than what the speed limit is because they know that you should be taking these turns at a slower rate. Okay, all objects want to continue their current state of motion. When a large object changes direction, it requires a significant amount of force to do so. In this particular case, it seems there was insufficient traction or force available to cause such a sudden change in the object's direction. Okay, there's a video about this, which is pretty cool, so you should watch that. Okay, next question. You are driving to school like usual, but this time the roads are icy and there is not as much traction on the ground. In order to make it to the school safely, should you A, drive slower, B, drive faster, C, drive the same speed you normally drive? So, if there's not as much traction, what that means is there's not as much friction. So, in this case, the force of friction is equal to the force centripetal, allowing you to move in a circle, which is equal to mv squared over r. So if your velocity is a lot lower, that means you don't need as much friction. So if you drive slower, you'll be safer because there's not that much friction to help you go around these co uh, corners. Okay, moving on. 
Uh, okay, a 1,000 kilogram car rounds a corner that has a radius of 50 meters. If the maximum friction the wheels can take before it starts to slip is 7,000 uh, newtons, what is the greatest speed the car can go without skidding? Okay, so again, we should know the force of friction is equal to force centripetal. Okay, that's what allows for it to go in a circle. And we should know force centripetal is equal to mv squared over r. Oops, uh, let me erase that part. Um, and if you memorize this, we know that v is equal to uh, the force centripetal times the radius divided by m and the square root of that. So that would be for centripetal, which is the friction force, so that's 7,000. The radius, which is 50. The mass, which is 1,000. So I plug that all in, 7,000 times 50 divided by 1,000. Square root of that, and I should get 18.71. Okay, so that's the fastest it can go if the maximum friction is 7,000 newtons, meaning if it went faster than that, it would start to slide, okay? If it went slower than that, it'd be fine, but that's the fastest it could go with that amount of traction. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, next time we'll be talking about vertical motion, which is a little more complicated, but I'm sure you guys will do great. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.